Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer for the new Boston and in this tutorial we're going to be covering functions. Now functions are very similar to subs except there's one main difference. Functions return a value and what this means is when you call that function it's going to give you a value back and you can set this value to um, anything that you would like. Uh, we're going to be using some of the primitive data types for our functions in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started and make a little demo application. So go ahead and click new project. I'll resize this here. Windows Forms application and we will call it functions. And go ahead and click OK and we'll wait for that to load. OK, so we're going to open up our toolbox here. And we're going to find the button. Now I'll just add the button to, the, to our form we'll set the text to run function we'll go ahead and scroll up and we'll set the name to button run function okay so now that we've got that done we're gonna go ahead and double click on run and then you can see it opens up our event handler for button run function click and we're gonna go ahead and make a function so we're going to come down here below our private sub button run function underscore click and what we're going to do is we're going to create a function. So just like a sub we're going to start out with either the private keyword or the public keyword. Now since we don't want another class to access this we're going to call it private and then we're going to use the keyword function and then we'll just name this solve math we will add empty parameters and now after this you have to specify a type for your function now since all functions return a value they have to return a certain kind of value so what we're going to do is use the as keyword and we will just use double so what this means is that our function solve math is going to return a double and then we've got in function here and you can see that we get a warning and it says function solve math doesn't return a value on all codes code paths so what we have to do is we have to return a value so what we'll do is we'll just return 20, uh, 13 divided by 5 so what this is gonna do is it's gonna take 13 divided by 5 and give that back to the person who called that what we can also do is create a couple variables so we'll just do num1 as integer and we will set it equal to um, 23 and then we can declare num2 as integer and set that one equal to 5 and then what we can do is instead of returning 13 divided by 5 which will give us an answer something like uh, 2 point something we can just do num1 divided by num2 now if you wanted to you could also create another variable that was called answer and set answer equal to num1 divided by num2 and then return answer but we don't really need to do that so we're just going to return num1 divided by num2 and since there's a possibility that we're going to get a decimal number by dividing we're going to go we, what we did was we declared our function solve math as a double so now if we go ahead and come up here to button run function click we can go ahead and type message box dot show and then what we can do is we can call solve math. So what this is going to do is it's going to print out the number that is returned from solve math inside of our message box. And now if we go ahead and run this, we can click run and you can see it gives us 4.6. Now instead of just displaying this inside of a message box, what if we want to save that value for later? So let's come up here and we'll create a variable so dim answer as double and we will set it equal to solve math which is going to get the math 23 divided by 5 and then we can just print out answer and if we go ahead and run this it's going to work exactly the same we click run and we get 4.6 now with functions you can have a function that is a double an integer a string a character a boolean whatever you want so go ahead and make a couple functions um, test them out and once you got that down go ahead and move on to the next tutorial 
Okay, so as I was saying, go ahead and make a couple functions and uh, practice that. And then once you got that down, move on to the next tutorial. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about passing values to functions so, so that you can use values outside of that function, uh, which is um, very useful. And you're going to be doing this with mostly all of your functions. So um, thanks for watching, guys. And stay tuned for the next tutorial.